Shalom, Kahala Yahawah, Bashem Yahushai, Bashem Rukah Pradash, double honors my teachers, the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, peace and mercy to the elect with the house of David be born again in this generation, and Shalom to the 130 Yash Rala, who today were known as the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, who before losing our true heritage, we were known as and still are the true Hebrew Israelites of the Holy Bible. In this week's installment of Weekly Wickedness, Volume 3, we're going to go ahead and go through some stories that caught my attention that uh, haven't necessarily had videos made about them, but I thought that uh, you should know about them. So let's go ahead and uh, before we get into that, I just want to make an announcement. Uh, but let's read this first. This is Matthew 10 and 8. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely ye have received, freely give. And the latter part of this is the point I want to make. So uh, as some of you may know, I'm a, you know, I'm, I'm an artist, okay, and, and I love making graphics for the, you know, in regards to this truth. Right now, I, I don't focus everything I do on these graphics, but I use them uh, in, in addition to my, uh, to my, you know, lessons and, you know, and to give to the body, right? I'll, you know, make some things, some infographics, adjust, you know, existing images and, you know, basically make them better or, you know, basically I'm a visual learner. So I like to, you know, teach visually, right? So what I've done to make it easier for you all came and i him out there who have asked for, for, you know, the images that I, that I made. If you have copies of them, of course, right? Because again, honestly, these aren't even my images. These are the images that the Lord allowed me to create so that way you can have them, okay? That being said, if you want any of these images, which you can see here, and this isn't all of them, but for the most part, this is all the images I believe that are, you know, most, basically the images I think that our community can use, okay? So, you know, feel free to have them. You know, the only thing I ask is do not sell these images. Don't put them on t-shirts and then sell the t-shirts to make money. You know, if somebody asks who made them, you know, let them know that I made them or just tell them God made them, okay? The, the point being is, is these Im images here are for us, okay? I'm not making any money off of them. I don't want any money off of them. I want these to be shared. You know, you're more than happy to, to copy them, share them online. You know and you know distribute them but again do not sell these images you know that's the thing man like it just like i just read freely have you received freely give all right so with all that let's go ahead and get into uh this uh week's weekly wickedness so the first uh story comes from insider uh or businessinsider.com and it tells you here it says a biotech company wants to take human DNA and create artificial embryos that could be used to harvest organs for medical transport, right? Or transplants, excuse me. All right, so check that out, man. So Esau, right, the so which is the biblical name of the so-called Caucasian race, they've now gotten to a point, right? And, and look, look at who it is, right? The top tribe of Edom, right? Which would be Amalek or what you would call the so-called Jews, right? The, the people over in the land of Israel today who uh, claim they are Jews, right? But in fact, they are Edomites, right? The top tribe of Edom being Amalek, okay? Now, look at what they've done, man. It says an Israeli firm wants to replicate a successful mouse embryo experiment with human cells, right? And we'll get into this in just a bit to show you what they're talking about. The company, Renewal Bio wants to use the technology to make humanity younger and healthier, right? And what did, what has always been said? That Satan would come to you and offer you to live forever, right? He would offer you immortality if you take his, you know, his way instead of God's way, right? This is it, Akiyam. This is how the devil is going to come through, man, is by offering you all these false miracles through the way of his science, right? Through the way of his, 
his uh, you know, craft. It says, the use of synthetic human embryos has sparked ethical concerns amongst the scientific community. Right? So, this is, so there you go, man. So this is what Esau wants. Man. He wants to be able to create life. And not only that, but to harness humanity for his own good. Because he isn't just going to be out there. If he was ever allowed to get this far and create you know, life himself, he wouldn't be out there creating it for a benevolent reason. No, man. He would do it so, so that way he would gain off of it, man. He would create a slave race, right? A people like you see in his movies, right? Like this, this right here, this headline uh, basically mimics a movie that came out, I think in 2000 or like in, in the early 2000s called The Island with Ewan McGregor, where basically clones are, are, are grown from people's cells and they're basically used there for, uh, part, you know, organ harvest. Basically the elite would pay to have clones of themselves made and kept away uh, and you know hidden from society so that way one day in case they ever needed a heart a liver or you know lung whatever they could then use it right even uh if they wanted to have babies they would have their basically their clone you know um, be pregnant go through the birth and then after the birth the clone would be killed off and the baby would then be delivered to the uh to the elite family that paid for that right now as far as for that mouse uh, experiment this is what they're talking about, right? This happened at the University of Cambridge. It says, scientists grow synthetic embryo with brain and beating heart without eggs or sperm. You see that? Check that out, Akim. So these devils, man, they have gotten to some crazy levels with their with their science, okay? And the thing is, is, is this, this isn't humans. This is ultimately, I think, like, like the, those mouse stem cells, right? This, but this is ultimately what it is. This is the, an image of those synthetic embryos that they've created, okay? This is basically what, uh, in this case, uh, what baby mice look like, right? But ultimately, you know, humans aren't that different, right? And this is ultimately, like you just read in the previous uh, article, that Esau is now wants to take this experiment and take it to the next step and have it practice on human embryos, right? So there's going to be people out there who are going to donate their stem cells to these devils so that way they could have uh, these, uh, uh, you know, clones created from them. It says, scientists from the University of Cambridge have created model embryos from mouse stem cells that form a brain and a beating heart and the foundations of all the other organs of the body. It represents a new avenue for recreating the first stages of life. This is 2 Thessalonians 2 and 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, right? Any means, right? So if Esau's over here claiming he can create life in a, in a Petri dish, that he could provide you with immortality, get rid of all, you know, your pains and worries, don't believe him. Don't be deceived by any means. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, right? And we already fell away from our heritage. That's what this is talking about. The Negro, Latinos, and Native Americans forgot that we were the Israelites, okay? We fell away. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. And that's what's happening right now, right? Who is out there creating this stuff, man? Who is out there at the, at the forefront of science doing abominable works, right? Doing things which, you know, are in the realms of, of God's, you know, toolbox. Right? Who, <laughs> it leads right into it, verse 4. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, and that is worshiped, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, right? Wants to get into your body, wants to inject that R, um, R DNA, or that, right? Wants to have you take those snake bites to, to alter your, your, bio, your, your body's biological makeup showing himself that he is God. Remember, remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you of these things. And now ye know that what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time, right? And that's what's happening right now, man. This, these devils, these antichrists, because that's all ultimately who these Edomites are, man, they're all antichrists, right? They're against 
the Bible. They are contrary, they're adversaries to the God of the Bible, okay? And this is what they think. This is their mindset. That they are better than, than, than God, right? Uh, what did that devil, uh, Harar, Noah, Noah Harari, say, right? It's been going around the internet. Brothers have been making a video saying that he don't, no longer cares if God is angry, right? If God stops the rains, that they got, they can make their own water, right? They're better than God, right? That's that's these devils, man. That's the man of per, that's the son of perdition being revealed because it is his time to be revealed, right? His kingdom is over. Next story comes from uh, the Seattle Times. He says. Alaska snow crabs have disappeared. Where they went is a mystery. The theories are many. The crabs moved to Russian waters. They are dead because predators got them. They are dead because they ate each other. The crabs scuttled off the continental shelf and scientists just didn't see them. Alien abduction. These devils are fucking crazy, man. Okay, that last one. That last one, but everyone agrees on one point. The disappearance of Alaska snow crabs probably is connected to climate change, right? So don't believe these devils, man. Ultimately, the Lord is plaguing these devils, man, right? See, you're not even supposed to be eating crab or any shellfish, right? These devils, man, what they've done is they've taken the most abominable animals on earth, your swine, your crabs, your shrimp, Right? And they've made them a delicacy, right? They're selling you crap and they're making you pay out of the nose for it, man. Right? So that way, not only can they make money off of, off of the gullible people out there, but that they can also destroy the earth and also def help defile your body. So that way the Lord won't deal with you, right? And what did the Lord do, man? He got rid of these, these things, man. And why is that? Because he wants to start plaguing these devils, man. Right? See, this is the famine. That the Lord is bringing upon the earth, right? And you know these devils are, are, are behind this, regardless if it's climate change or it's, you know, these you know, the Lord, you know, making these crabs basically go into hiding, right? The, ultimately, it's the Lord's will. But what what is the result of this, right? This is Isaiah 24 and 4. The earth mourneth and fadeth away. The world languisheth and fadeth away. The haughty people of the earth do languish. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinances, right? Now they're saying it's okay to eat crabs, eat the abominable food which the Lord said not to, right? To eat the, the, the cl cleaning mechanism of the earth. These devils have made it a delicacy, man. Broken the everlasting covenant, therefore hath the curse devoured the earth and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of earth are burned and few men left. The new wine mourneth and the vine languisheth. All of the merry hearted do sigh, right? And this is what you're gonna hear, man. What about your red lobsters, these, these uh, seafood restaurants, the, you know, the piers. They're gonna start, they're gonna start sighing, man, because they ain't gonna have freaking snow crab to eat, right? Again, this is ultimately the, the Lord's Lord's work, man. And check this out, man. This is kind of you know near to my heart. With these devils over there at DC Comics, right? Uh, pretty soon we're going to go into a Hispanic Heritage Month, which is like mid September to mid October. And look at what these devils did, man. It says DC called out for controversial changes to Hispanic Heritage cover art. A recent Green Lantern cover from DC Comics celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month has come under fire for changes that drastically altered the image. Check this shit out, Akim. Look what these fucking devils did, man. This just shows you that these guys are the fucking devils, man. So here, right here is the image uh, that was originally created by uh, the, the artist. Um, I forgot his name. Something Molina. David Molina or something. So let me show you real quick. So this is, uh, or Jason Molina or something, or George Molina, right? He's a famous comic book artist, right? But he made this this image of Green Lantern, right? And Green Lantern's backstory, if you're not into the comic, is he finds out that his long lost dad is actually half Hispanic, right? 
and, and we ultimately, you know, know how it works in the, you know, according to the Bible, you are what your father is, right? Well, that being said, Green Lantern is an Issacharite, okay? Well, this is the image that the artist uh, made for the cover of the Hispanic uh, Heritage Month for, for the DC comic of Green Lantern, okay? You got the, the, the Mexican flag, you got the, the eagle eating the snake, right? You know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a proud, you know, very dignified image, right? And look at what these fucking devils did, man, right? He, uh, this guy here even came out and said, man, that he wasn't happy, that they actually edited his image, uh, you know, and, and, public, and are gonna go with that. But look what these fucking devils did. So now you go, they, not only did they change the flag, Viva Mexico, but look at this shit, man. They got him holding a bag of tamales. You see that shit? That's fucking, that's just a fucking racist ass shit, man. These devils are, are, are behind it. Check this out, man. And they say that, that this is the image that it was copyrighted, because that's what they're saying, that this was ultimately a copyrighted issue, image, uh, or it, it fell too close to this image, so they, so they stopped it, okay? Or they had to stop it. But check this out, man. I want to show you real quick. You know what? I can't find it, man. But ultimately, there's like four covers that these devils, or maybe down here and shit. See, look at that. The bag of tamales, man. But uh, here you go. Check this shit out, man. So it wasn't only the Green Lantern comic book that they were gonna make a cover for, but also other uh, other comic book characters that had some sort of Hispanic heritage, right? Check this out, man. You got this Green Lantern character, I don't know her name. But what is she doing, man? Eating a fucking burrito, okay? How about this guy here, Blue Beetle? What is he doing? Eating some fucking tacos, you see, right? And this one here, uh, I think it's Golden Falcon or something, right? What is he fucking doing? Eating fucking fried banana, or uh, fried plantains. So that shit, you know, this this brother here fucking mentioned this, got this perfectly. Just showing the food is all we need to see about the culture? Like, that's reductive as fuck. And that's exactly what's going on, man. But again, this is Esau. This is these Edomites in their fucking, uh, in, in their pride, man. Look at that shit, man. There you go, white people taco night, man. There's another image here about fucking Trump, man. Remember when Trump had that fucking, uh, that taco salad and shit, man? And he was talking about he loves Mexican people and shit. I was eating that taco salad in his fucking office. That's that's these Edomites, man. When they think that they're fucking uh, uh, giving us fucking some sort of recognition, and the, you know, it's they're actually fucking being racist as fuck. But hey, that's what it tells you, man. That the spirit of these Edomites would be. This is Psalm seventy-three and eight. They are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily, right? These people think that, again, that this shit's cool, man, right? But again, that's just the spirit of these Edomites, man. See, this is how you know who the Edomites are, man. Well, you don't see the Arabs out there, the Chinese, the true Africans, the, the Armenians making little fucking faux pas like this that, that make digs at our, that, at our nationality, right? Reduces our people down to a fucking food flavor. Man, these guys are fucking devils, man. The next thing, man, we've been seeing some crazy things, man. Look at this. Extreme flooding in Vegas. Look at that, man. This just shows you, man, that we're going through some crazy ass times. You got Esau here playing with the weather, and that's messing everything up, man. And the Lord is basically repaying it back upon him, man. Destroying the cities, bringing the destruction, right? Showing Esau that he's only a man. And then you got this right here that's come out to be revealed. It says the UN recruited over a hundred thousand digital first responders. Who's that? These are the fact checkers. These are the, the, the people out there making comments, right? Pushing a certain narrative to push established, you know, karagma or, or see this, you know, the, 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 the snake bite narrative. It says at the height of the pandemic, the United Nations recruited over 100,000 digital first responders to push the establishment's narrative on the snake bite via social media. The revelation actually slipped out 
in October 2020 during the World Economic Forum. There goes these devils again, man. You see that, man? These devils are all over the place, man. And why is that? Because this is where Esau is pulling the strings from, okay? Podcast called Seeking a Cure for the Infodemic. Although it is only going viral on Twitter today. Here's a question. What's spreading across the globe is passing unwittingly from person to person, is potentially deadly, yet it can be stopped if everyone takes steps to prevent its spread. The answer, misinformation. I've started. So there you go, man. Realize that misinformation was only misinformation when this truth started to come out, right? These devils are having to push a, a certain narrative. Let me, let me show you something real quick, okay? If you don't understand how this works, let's go to the, the master propagandist himself, Joseph Goebbels, right? He was the propagandist for Esau's Nazi, uh, you know, base. Right? What does he say? Propaganda 101. Number one, if you tell a lie big enough and keep repeating it, people will eventually come to believe it. Right? What does that remind you of, man? Remember when, when uh, George Bush, uh, the shrub, the, you know, the junior, when he came out there, he said, oh, I'm in the business of having to repeat myself. Right? Having to continue to tell everybody uh, the same thing. Right? Number two, accuse the other side of that which you are guilty. Have we not seen this establishment make claims that they let later get caught on, that they're actually doing themselves being hypocrites? Number three, propaganda works best when those who are being manipulated are confident that they are acting on their own free will. Check that out, man. There's a lot of these zombies out here, man. You can tell that they're basically just a step. They're just repeating establishment dogma, man. When you talk to them, man, they, they repeat all the talking points, right? The, you know, I don't even get mention them here because I don't want to trigger any freaking uh, you know, checks on, on YouTube's list. And th number four, this is probably the, the biggest one. It is vitally important for the state to repress dissent. To repress dissent. For the truth is the mortal enemy of the lie, and thus the greatest enemy of the states. Okay, so what did these devils do? They hide, they recruited over a hundred thousand digital first responders to push the establishment snake bite narrative. And why is that? Because again, let's repeat that: to repress dissent. Okay, so understand that, Akim. That if you know that. Uh, you know, if, if you don't understand that right now we're being, you know, actively manipulated, then you just can't see it. Let's read this. The point of modern propaganda isn't only to misinform or push an agenda. It is to exhaust your critical thinking, to annihilate truth. Gary Kasparov. This is that, uh, that famous KGB Russian... Uh, um, ex-agent who basically uh, basically spilled the guts of how they're going to basically destroy America, which is what's happening right now. Look up this guy's name and you're going to find his, uh, his uh, interview, man. It's like three hours, two to three hours, but it is freaking jaw-dropping, man. Just hear what this guy says, okay? And check this out. Breaking. According to DC, Mayor Bowser... <laughs> Un unjabbed students will not be allowed in school, nor will there be virtual learning. They will be denied an education. So check that out, man. DC Mayor says no virtual learning giving unjabbed black teens zero alternative options, right? Notice that, black teens. And why is that? Well, because Judah uh, and also Issachar, Ephraim, right? We tend to be the least jabbed up people man and why is that well because that's the, because the lord has put it in our spirits to not trust these devils man but look at this man you even got our own people out there man not only are they pushing propaganda against us but they got our own people to be the head fig the you know the the figureheads of their movement man this this devil this fucking witch here man she's gonna pay for for all the shit she's doing man right 
What does the Bible tell you, man? Not all Israel is of Israel. See, the Lord has blinded devils like this, man. Has given her everything she wants, so that way she could go and do this against her people, right? But again, this is her kingdom, man. This, she is sold out, and she's now getting her uh, her her, uh, her reward down because ultimately she's gonna have to pay. She's gonna go down with Esau, her master. This is Micah two and one. Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. When the morning is light, they practice it because it is in the power of their hand, right? They could hire 100,000 people to push false truths, fake news, right? They could, you know, bribe our women so that way they could be out there pushing unjust decre dec decrees, right? That's what these devils are doing, man. This is why... You know, these, we say, man, these Edomites, they're the devils the Bible speaks of because it literally, that's what they are. Next story. Joe Biden's Inflation Reduction Act secretly brought to you by Bill Gates, right? Remember this devil here? Oh, look, he's right here by his buddy, Epstein, along with Larry Summers, this fucking devil, man. Look at this, man. When you get into the story, you start finding out that, uh, that, that uh, this bill, for the most part, got passed, right? With the pushing of, uh, of, of basically Gates, basically uh, greasing the palms of these devils, man, of the, all these politicians. So that way his agenda could get passed. And what was that agenda? Well, he tries to pass it off as some way to, to, to help climate and everything. But ultimately, man, it's to, it's to uh, push forward this this uh, digital currency, this cashless society, which this devil wants you to go to. And why is that? Because remember, Microsoft holds, I think it's patent 606060, where it basically uh, allows for digital currency to be, to be uh, basically implanted or, or, or mined from your own body, right? If you do an action, there's a way that you could track that action that you do, and hence you then get paid. So for example, if you wanna, if you, if, you, if you take your snake bite, you know, that action will be reported and hence you'll get paid out, right? You do what you're told and these devils will reward you, right? That that patent is owned by this devil and his, and his past company, right? Which he still is a shareholder of. And uh, speaking of um, bringing forward the cash in society, let's see what's going on with our current economy. Inflation is quickly stripping us of our private property rights, right? Check that out. You'll own nothing and you'll be happy. And while today's lesson is rather elementary, it's worth noting that this conspiracy theory not only isn't too far from the truth, it could very well be in the midst of taking place right before our eyes, right? So let's go ahead and read this real quick. It says, I used to scoff at the notion of the Great Reset or the idea that a handful of elites are running the global show behind the scenes. Needless to say, on the other side of the pandemic, I have war warmed up to the idea in, the, in a big way. I can't help but feel as though some, of, some often talked about conspiracy theories are in the process of unfolding right before our very eyes whether via premeditated means or just from a plain old dumbass incompetence from global politicians and central banks as anybody who is harshly critical of the idea of a great reset uh, will tell you one of the key tenets of a post-apocalyptic Klaus Schwab run world is the idea that we will no longer have private property rights that comes from a statement that Schwab made predicting that what life would be like in the year 2030, right? And these devils, man, they want that socialist world government, man. Look at this, man. In just three years, things cost between 15 to 20% more than they did when many savers were putting away a majority of their money before the pandemic, the purchasing power of the dollar is down by about 20% over the same time. You see that? So these devils don't have to take away your money because they're gonna make your money worthless. You see that? And all this right here is so that way 
the systems that these devils are putting into place to bring forward that digital currency, those CBDCs, for that to, to uh, be fulfilled. The Second Corinthians 2 and 11. Least Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Right? And this is ultimately the device of these devils, man. They are inflating the, the economic system around the world. They're devaluating the dollar and all the other currencies that are tied to it. And this is the problem that they've created so that way they could later come through with the solution, which is going to be that digital currency, which eventually will be tied to the mark of the beast, which is the RFID implantable chips. Okay. Which at first right now you're seeing they're all meant about voluntary. They're being pushed as something hip and new, convenient. And later on, they're going to be pushed as something that's safe, mandatory and, and required, right? And listen, and listen to this fucking devil, man. If you don't know who this uh, douchebag is, man, he's one of those guys on the Shark Tank, okay? Listen to this, man. This right here is Esau, Esau's fucking uh, spirit right here, man. Elf, this according to Oxfam, of the world's 85 richest people is equal to the three and a half billion poorest people. It's fantastic. And this is a great thing because it inspires everybody, gets the motivation to look up to the 1% and say, I want to become one of those people. I'm going to fight hard to get up to the top. This is fantastic news. And of course, I applaud it. What can be wrong with this? Really? Yes, really. So somebody living on I celebrate a capitalism. dollar a day in Africa is because getting up in the morning and saying, I'm going to be Bill Gates. That's the motivation Only everybody thing needs. Me and I'm that not guy against is charity. Motivation. I just need to pull up my socks. I am oh, not wait, don't... I don't have socks. I'll just say I've been briefed by people who are in the know, and it's um, it's very telling what they're telling me. And they're, you know, I've talked to Navy pilots, have absolutely nothing to gain by telling me information. You know, they showed me photographs and things that were very unusual. And in fact, they, they there's something in our airspace that we do not control, and that ought to be very concerning. Shortly after our interview, the congressman showed me in confidence the photographs he was talking about. If authentic, they're extraordinary. They are very clear Polaroid images of a hovering metallic flying source for a fact. When you say the government's been involved in a cover-up, do you think they've been concealing? Oh, yes. Yeah. It's an amazing I mean, I know, allegation. I, 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 I know it for a fact. I mean, I just like, know that. Why, why do you know that? What, because what? I've spoken to the people who are about to come out and, and whistleblow on it. Wow. So you know what's coming. Yeah. So there has been a cover-up. Yeah. And there has been an active cover-up. I mean, just, just look at what the Department of Defense announced last week. They announced an office to study the phenomenon. Money put aside. They've said, we're going to go back to 1947. Which is incredible. That's the date of Roswell. Yeah. 1947, we want a list of every, uh, every operation that you've done to disinform and misinform. You hear that? To misinform and disinform. So you see, these devils, man, they know what these UFOs are, okay? 
That first congressman, he may not have known, but the higher ups, the people who stay in power, regardless of who gets elected and come, who comes in, who goes out, these, these Edomites at the very top, they actually know what is going on. They know that the chariots, these UFOs, are in fact the angels of the Lord coming in and out of our world to, to check up on the things, man. Namely, to check on, on the Lord's people, that being us Israelites, the Negro Latino Native Americans. This is Proverbs 15 and 3. The eyes of Yahweh Bashim Nashai are in every place, beholding the uh, evil and the good. Okay? That right there is talking about the, the chariots, right? These UFOs. They are in every place. Okay? This is Amos 9 and 8. Behold, the eyes of Lord power are upon the sinful kingdom. Right? That's America. And I will destroy it from off the face of the earth, saying that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, saith Yahweh Bashim Yahashai. Right? So you see, Akiyam, these, these uh, appearances by, by the angels, by the chariots, they have gotten to a level where now these devils, they cannot deny it anymore, man. So what are they going to do? They, they're going to, they, they now admit it to it that, that there is something there, but they're not going to tell the whole world the exact truth. They're going to, they're going to play stupid. They're going to pretend that they're studying it all while buying, buying themselves more time, building up the space force, right? The weapons that they believe are going to save themselves, right? But again, why is this relevant? Why am I talking about this? Well, because one, it was wicked that these devils knew about it and that now Let's, let's listen to that again. The operation that you've done to disinform and misinform. There you go. Because these devils have been hiding this truth since back in the days of Roswell, man. Right? They, they know what these are, man. Right? In the, in the very high echelons of the government, when it goes past the government up to the elites, they understand that these are, in fact, the angels that are here watching over the Israelites. But what do they do? They, they, they create whole movie franchises, movements, you know, popular, uh, you know, uh, cult classics to basically train people to believe that they are something else, right? Because again, why? Because these are the devils in power. They're, they're not going to tell you the truth, man. Do not rely or do not expect your enemies to tell you that which will free you, okay? So either way, Akim, you know, we're, we're coming close to the end, man, and these actions are proving it, right? What does it say? That the end is manifest? That's what's happening, man. The end is now manifest, and this is why we're seeing such crazy things going on in these current times, okay? So in this video, was that a fine, Akim? Until the next time, I want to give all honor and glory and praises to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahushai, Bashem, Rukho, Bardash. Double honor to my teachers, the apostles and elders of the Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the elect. Shalom.